Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at parallel circuits. And parallel circuits are going to, let's build a circuit here with two bulbs. And let's do that. And this. And in parallel we're going to wire these two loads up, these two marker lights, so that they both have the, the source voltage, which is about 13 volts, applied across both of them. And so we're going to come through our fuse and through our master switch and we'll come and bring some power uh, into the first one and we're going to daisy chain that so we feed the same 13 volts to both sides of these bulbs now if you look real close there's a black wire and a brown wire you typically in the automotive business or an all auto uh, electrical uh, wiring harnesses black represents ground a bulb has no polarity, so it wouldn't really matter, but uh, we're going to bring in power on the brown wire and bring the black wire out as a ground. So we've daisy chained, so both of these light bulbs are exposed to this 12 or 13 volt source. Then we'll take the grounds. We've got to complete the circuit back to ground. Now you may notice if you've compared this uh, to the video of uh, the two bulbs in series, uh, these are very bright. These are actually the, the correct brilliance because they're now exposed to 12 volts on this side and the ground on this side. And that's the, the main rule of a parallel circuit is all these, these are called branches. Each one of these is a branch. Each branch is exposed to source voltage. This 13 volts available at the power tap is available to both of these branches. This is a branch, that's a branch. Two individual circuits. Also, both of these branches are exposed to the ground. So this same source voltage is gonna be available to both branches. If you had three or four or five lights, they would all be exposed to the same voltage. So that's one of the, one of the fundamental rules of parallel circuit is branch circuits all see source voltage. Another nice thing about parallel is that each branch works on its own. If I had an open, I had a switch over here, I could use a switch and open and close the circuit, I can just simply unplug it. This light goes out, has no effect on that light because this branch has no effect on the other branch. So this could be uh, lights on, a lights off, it could be a different light, it could be a larger bulb, different, different resistance value in the bulb, you know, different current. So each branch stands on its own. So just to show you with a meter and to get some practice, uh, let's look at volts first. Just come in here and let's take a look at source. So we go black way down here to the ground and eh, up here to source and Jump over here to volts DC and about 13.8 volts applied to the whole project. Now, if I come down here and look at this one branch here, there's my actually 1375. What's going on? We're losing about 500 of a volt outside of the load here. This is where we'd like, like to see the entire source voltage right here. We don't. We're losing 500 of a volt, which is insignificant. And that's probably going to be in this module A. We have a fuse holder and a switch assembly and some connections. But 1375 on this bulb, and when we pull up out and go down to the other bulb that's in parallel, we have 13.75. It's proof that all the branches of a parallel circuit are exposed to the same source voltage. Let's also take a peek. It, the other basic rule is that all the currents, let's go back over here, all the currents of the branch circuit added together will equal total circuit current. So if I want to see the total circuit current, or let's do branch current first. If I want to get the current through this bulb, I've got to look at here and think where can I get in here and get just this current on this branch, which will be right here. 
See how the light goes out. So let's open, open this guy up. This uh, coming to the amp port. I'm chirping. Need to go to amps. So come out of the bulb into the meter. Come out of the meter right back into the circuit. I've completed the circuit back through the meter. The lights are back on. We have 260 milliamps. So roughly a quarter of an amp through a marker light. Might want to make a note of that. If you work on marker lights in the future and they're dim and they're bright, the marker light should, uh, it's called a 158 marker light, should be about a quarter of an amp. Because 259 small M milliamps. To take, drop the M, got to do the decimal place, three places to the left, and you got 0.259. So we got about a quarter amp in this bulb. Let's, uh, Go over here, let's grab, be easy to jump in right here. We can open up, come into the meter, come back out of the meter, and now we see another 265. These are real close. Here again, these two bulbs, the filament resistance will vary due to production tolerances. Just a, a tad more down there. You will see both of these are pretty close, pretty pretty much pushing a half an amp. So let's see if we got that. Now, if I want to check, I want to check the whole circuit current. If uh, the rules of circuits correct, these two quarter amps should add together, and right here I should see uh, here, here, or here. These are common places. These are places on a circuit that are common to both bulbs. So if you're doing a drill and the challenge is to measure the current through both bulbs, you need to be in a part of a circuit that's solid or that, that is common to both, which is here or here. So it just opened it up uh, right here at the very beginning. Let's do it here. I can come out into the uh, amp port then come out of COM port right back into the project. And because we weren't exactly a quarter of an amp, we get a little over half an amp. But this proves that the currents through all the branches, you add them together, you'll get the, uh, the total circuit current over here. And just knowing this will help you solve some of the uh, schematic problems or Ohm's law type uh, problems by using some of these principles. And um, that's a wrap for parallel.